What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Monday, September 1st, 2025. Right now, I'm tracking storm conditions for tonight as NOAA forecasts a G2 to G3 geomagnetic storm. That's moderate to strong levels with auroras possibly dipping far south into the United States. Now, here's the thing. If you look at the real-time data, Earth's magnetic field is still mostly calm. The KP index is sitting around two or three, unsettled but not storming and yet protons have already been rising fast ahead of the CME's arrival. That's unusual. Normally you get the geomagnetic spike when the CME shock front actually hits Earth. This time the radiation storm is already underway while the field itself remains quiet. It's a mismatch. It raises questions. And here's where it gets a little eerie. Today marks the 166th anniversary of the Carrington event, the strongest solar storm in recorded history. Back in 1859, telegraph lines sparked, operators were shocked and auroras lit the skies as far south as the Caribbean. If we had another Carrington level storm today, with our satellites, power grids and internet cables, it would be catastrophic. So on this anniversary, while the sun is active again, we need to pay close attention to these anomalies. Because at the same time, HARP has been transmitting and documents confirm recent activity. By heating the ionosphere, HARP creates a virtual antenna which can couple into Earth's magnetic field lines, the very same pathways guiding these charged particles. So when we see proton storms arriving early, ahead of the natural CME timing, we have to ask, is this simply the sun, or is Earth's magnetic shield being primed or weakened by technology? People keep saying the Schumann resonance is rising and giving humanity DNA upgrades, but the Schumann frequencies are natural standing waves in Earth's ionosphere cavity, stable around 7.83 Hz. What we're really seeing in those spectrograms, the whiteouts, spikes, it is an ascension, it's electromagnetic warfare. Systems like HARP, NEXRAD, ISCAT, and SuperDARN, along with global comm networks, are pumping energy into the atmosphere. These technologies are detuning the planet instead of tuning humanity. And while this is happening above, tragedy is unfolding below. A 6.0 earthquake has struck Afghanistan, killing at least 800 people, injuring more than 2,500 people, and leaving more than 1,000 still missing. Entire villages have been reduced to rubble, and the death toll will likely climb. In the past, after devastating quakes like this, World leaders, especially in Turkey and other nations, have openly accused outside powers of using advanced technology to trigger earthquakes. This goes to show that the idea is alive at the highest levels of government, and the timing of these disasters alongside of atmospheric manipulation makes the question impossible to ignore. So here's the picture tonight. Above us, protons streaming early, auroras on the horizon, and no a warning of storms still to come. Below us, an earthquake disaster claiming thousands of lives. In between, the planet's natural resonance being disrupted by artificial interference. On this Carrington anniversary, we're reminded that nature is powerful enough on its own, but when technology tampers with it, the line between natural disaster and engineered catastrophe blurs. Alright Skywatchers, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.